the first time we're meeting, so I am so happy about the fact that we're here together. Tell me a little bit about your background. I understand you founded two companies previously, one before joining Google and then one after you joined Google uh, and then rejoined Google. Um, yeah, I like to uh, tell the story that after, so I was finishing my PhD work at Stanford and it was kind of in the air that everyone was starting companies. And so I had like $30 in the bank, so I figure I had like $30 to lose. And um, I started a company because I thought this web thing is going to be really big. And it um, automatically organized the web into a Yahoo-like hierarchy, and it was called Zift. And then we had the dot-com crash, and I moved swiftly into the telco space, kind of patting myself on the back. But of course, that had a much bigger crash than the, telco, than the dot com crash. So I find myself um, you know, unemployed, um, as some entrepreneurs do. And I um, really wanted to kind of you know, renew myself and find a mission. And I volunteered at the Internet Archive, which has uh, snapshots of the web over time. And so it would have um, crawled like CNN.com, you know, 10 times a day. So as such, it was bigger than, than the web at the time. And so I, I wrote a history-based search engine. And, uh, and that IP was acquired by Google. And that's how I wound up there. OK, so um, but this is not cool. No. Okay. And then, uh, then I was at Google for a while. Okay. So you were at Google. This is like 2004-ish. So it's very early in the company. It's just gone public. Yeah. Um, and were you unhappy, or what? What sort of uh, drove you to leave and try again? Um, so you know, as as things do, like I w I joined at the 70th person in search, and um, I used the kind of architecture. Uh, to build the search engine uh, to roll out uh, Terra Google, which is, uh, was Google's big index at the time. And I, I went on mat leave with my fourth child, and I had uh, various responsibilities around Google in ads, in infrastructure, in search ranking, um, and of course, like the indexing and serving system. And uh, so I went on mat leave, and I came back, and there had been some reorgs while I was gone. And my stuff was under like four different VPs. So it was kind of a, a wake up moment that, um, that the company that was a startup had gotten you know, bigger. And so I, I really wanted to uh, try to do my own thing again. I love how you sneak in the fact that that was your fourth maternity <laughs> leave. <laughs> um, and so you decided time to start a company. I've got four kids, why not? Um, so, did you know right away what you wanted to do? I mean, had, was this something that you'd been sort of, you know, had been marinating or? Um, no, no. Um, but, you know, I was thinking that um, one of the great things about being an entrepreneur or, you know, being a creative person is the ability to start fresh with a blank canvas and, uh, and create anything that you wanted. And so, um, I was thinking about different ways to actually uh, portray um, search results to cluster things so that a certain topic would be in a certain area to plot um, results over time on a map in tabs. So we really played with um, all those different things. So it's interesting. You were at this search giant, but you'd come up with this technology that they didn't have, essentially. Which yeah, I think it was ways of, of displaying it, it was um, really around uh, trying to push the envelope on the UI side. Okay, so how did it come to pass that they acquired you? And did you sort of have in mind always that you would maybe bring this technology back to the company? Um, no, you know, it's, uh, it, it, for all the entrepreneurs out there, it'll be, it'll be one of those stories where um, you're sitting around the boardroom and you're like, oh, our traffic is not mm, taking off like we really wanted it to. So maybe um, we should go on the acquisition road, which, if you've ever done it, is, is very, very tough. Um, it's, it's like making a sales call, but you're not just making a sales call on behalf of, hey, buy my thing. It's great. It's like you know, all of your friends, your coworkers, and, um, and you, know, you have to picture yourself there and 
it, it's, it's very, very different. Um, and so we actually were down uh, the pike with, with several people. And then uh, we wound up at Android, which was part of Google. OK, great. So how, how did that go? And I, I hope I'm not spending too much time on this. But I feel like there's so many stories, including of people selling companies. And they yeah. kind of, you know, well, kind of bitch about it privately, or sometimes it spills out on Google and they regret selling. I mean, obviously yeah. you've stayed, so you didn't, but uh, any lessons learned there about sort of getting reabsorbed in this very, you know, huge company? So I, I think um, it's actually very similar to, like, for anybody who was, you know, getting a PhD, sometimes you think, you know why I was hired at this company? I was hired at this company in order to continue my PhD research because they really loved that. Um, that's really not the case, right? I mean, you're kind of always in for a surprise if you think that, or, or at least 99% in for a surprise. And uh, it's somewhat similar when you get acquired. You think, when I was uh, first acquired in 2000, end of 2003, um, I thought, oh, they acquired this technology because it's a history-based search engine or something. I start on the first day, and they said, we noticed your search engine doesn't have a lot of spam. So welcome to the spam fighting team. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, uh, and so I think it's like that um, when you get acquired. You're not necessarily sure where you're going to fit in to the overall bigger picture. Um, but I'm a pretty chill person. and. Um, and so I just kind of try to do my best. And so what was your, you had a VP title. Did you have a VP title sort of going right back in? Or tell me a little bit about your career at Google. Um, no, I mean, I, I was an engineer in 2003 with a, um, the old fashioned member of technical staff title. And, uh, and then uh, a principal uh, engineer, which is um, you know, a fairly senior engineer, and then uh, I moved over to management side to director of engineering, and when I was acquired back, I was director. And um, and then after Google Play launched, um, and I was in charge of a big piece of the cloud side of Google Play, then I became a VP. Um, and so I hope you'll forgive me, but there's obviously a lot of talk about diversity and Google's numbers. Did you feel in any way um, isolated working as a woman engineer within Google, or did like? you didn't have people that you could talk with or not enough sort of female peers? Um, I know that's a tough question because um, I, um, I kind of feel like engineers, we live in the, the realm of the mind. And the fact that you know, there was always this burning mission, like, um, and actually kind of the house was always burning down as well. Like you know, search kind of took off faster than we thought it would. Android took off faster than we thought it would, so there was pretty much constant emergencies. So, um, you know, really with my peers, we were kind of in the trenches uh, fighting that and uh, trying to figure out what was the emergency this week and maybe hopefully what the emergency next week would be. So um, I have to say I, I wasn't thinking too much about it. OK, that's great. Um, OK, so you're this VP at Google. You're going along. And um, now you're heading up this sort of little venture unit. So tell me yeah. how we got from A to B. Um, so after Android, uh, we were starting up uh, an AI division. And so um, everybody probably knows Jeff Dean. He was the first uh, VP in the AI division. I was the next one. And, um, and so I looked at how to move some AI technologies into our different product areas. And, um, and as I was doing that, I thought, oh, it would be interesting to see what startups are doing in this space and see if there's a way we can um, partner, incorporate startups. And I started working with startups kind of like every Thursday and realized I loved, uh, I loved kind of returning back to my entrepreneurial roots and working with them. and. Um, then I talked Google into every day could be Thursday for me by launching the AI fund. And they didn't think it was too much to sort of focus on AI, obviously. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think it's pretty public that it's uh, our strategy. So uh, I think by starting a new early stage uh, venture arm that aligned uh, with our strategy in order to kind of start with early stage companies and grow as the area grows. And how many people are you working with at this point? 
Um, we've invested in 11 companies, and there's uh, three more in flight being closed. Okay, and how big is your team? Oh, it's pretty small. Um, we have uh, kind of eight people that are uh, forward-facing, and then we have uh, some, you know, legal, finance, marketing support. So 14 companies is a lot. I mean, you just got started, at least publicly. I mean, I think I heard about you maybe in July of last year. So um, I guess first, where is your deal flow coming from? I mean, is every, are these just sort of companies that are approaching you? Or are you sort of trying to keep tabs on companies in the marketplace or, or you know, coming to events like this and talking to founders? Um, some people are approaching us, and, uh, and we also, you know, have a good team who are also pretty integrated in the startup community, and so um, it's really being accessible and, um, and meeting people out where they are. And um, what size checks are you writing? Uh, one to ten million. Okay. Uh, and do you care if you are sort of like the lead or the sole investor? Um, it's, we're fine being the sole investor or, or the lead. Um, I think we take uh, pretty provocative positions in um, kind of what we think are going to be hot. We're very uh, technology focused. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we're happy to partner as well. Um, and so, oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, this is obviously very different from... GV and capital G. So GV is a separate an early inv stage investing arm that's sort of, um, <clears throat> I mean, well, can, can invest in a spectrum of different technologies. Capital G, late stage. Um, those have funds. You, are, you don't have a discrete fund just yet, but that's sort of in the works. Yeah. Um, and do you work with them in any way? Like, if, will they say, you know, Anna, we looked at this company, it's pretty interesting, but it's too early for us. Or will you say, hey guys, uh, I met with this company, it's too far along, but you should take a look at it. How does, how does the whole thing work? Yeah, both of those have happened, mm -hmm. um, and we'd even co-invest. Uh, we wouldn't co-invest with Capital G because they're late stage and we're early stage, but we would co-invest with GV. Okay, and, but has, has that happened yet? Yes, they have sent us things that they thought were too early, and we have sent them things that we thought uh, were interesting but needed larger check sizes. Okay. And obviously a lot of people want to work with Google, but Google is also very big and scary. Um, so maybe you can clarify for people whether or not there's like a strategic interest in there or purely a financial. I think it's maybe, I think people would probably assume that there's some strategic interest, which... Um, there's only a strategic interest in that, you know, Google is interested in AI and that we're an AI fund, but we are not a strategic fund, um, so we don't um, only invest in you if you're partnering with Google or whatever else you might think of for a strategic fund. We're really an ROI fund uh, focused on AI. And what about um, sort of information flow? Can, can a founder who talks to you be certain that that information's not gonna go anywhere in case they're worried that Google's it's sort of in a swoop in and do the same um, thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't go anywhere except for our team. Uh, and then, um, so is the idea to sort of, I mean, I don't know if there's, you know, people always say there's no sort of um, meter to it, but are you kind of looking to fund like a couple of companies a month or it seems like that's what's happening? Yeah, I mean, there is kind of an uh, ebb and flow. We haven't been doing it a year, so anyone who, uh, is that a long-term fund? We'll know more about kind of the seasons of investing. But, you know, fall was uh, a lot busier than we thought, I guess, because people were out during the summer, so there was kind of pent-up demand, and we were kind of slammed. Um, and, uh, uh, but it is about that. It is about a few a month. And are there certain, I hesitate to ask this because I am no AI expert by any stretch of the imagination, but are there certain, like, buckets that you're looking to fill? Um, we are looking at mostly software, and if there's a hardware component, it could be like sensors or basically consumer price hardware. So um, if it needs, you know, $70,000 of hardware in order to get started, um, and that's the price point, like let's say factory robots or something, that's probably out of scope for us. Okay. Uh, and then in terms of teams, I mean, AI is still somewhat of a new discipline. Um, you know, a lot of VCs like to see founders who've worked together in the past 
um, I'm imagining you're seeing a lot of people that are just right out of school. Can you talk a little bit about what you're yeah. kind of gravitating toward? Um, wow, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, uh, some of the folks are right out of school. Um, and then, you know, some of our folks are out of another startup mm -hmm. um, that they started and, you know, it either sold or wrapped up and, uh, and they're incorporating again. Um, so we are seeing a mix of, of founders. And are you seeing people come to AI from like other kind of disciplines? I mean, since it's so sort of hot. Um, I mean, we are seeing, you know, some folks uh, with, you know, math backgrounds or, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, optical uh, engineering. Um, so it, it is a mix of backgrounds, but it is, they usually do have uh, an AI founder as well. Okay. So um, maybe tell me about some of your investments, just so it can, you know, again, we can flesh out a little bit what it is that you're looking for. Um, let's see, some of our investments. Um, I think the, the biggest investment that we've made to date is in Algorithmia. That was the Series A lead, and uh, they're up in Seattle. And they uh, will take a model that you've made, and they'll do the kind of hard work of productionizing it. So they have, uh, you can think of if you have your code in Git, instead uh, of being code that you have to compile and then test, uh, Algorithmia has the code up live. And so um, it shows you the various wrappers in order to call it. And you can call an instance on Algorithmia. And one of the things I really liked about it is um, that you can play with it. Like you can take your little data set and say, you know, uh, let's say it was like an NLP parsing. Um, you could type in sentences and test different models uh, for your use case. And um, I found that really compelling and thought that that would have saved us a, a lot of time. How did you find that company? Oh. Wow. Hmm. A, a founder a friend introduced me to the CEO. Okay. What's your newest investment? Wow. Um, Let's see, our newest investment um, is just in the middle of closing. Um, it's a very interesting 3D um, mapping, and it's out of Berkeley. That's not a lot of information. <laughs> I know, because, you know, it's our newest. Um, let's see, our newest public one um, is uh, a company called Ali, uh, Alio, and they do a, a robot recruiter for high volume businesses. So um, it, um, it, instead of going to a site uh, like Starbucks and trying to figure out how to navigate their forms in order to apply, it'll ask you things like, where do you live? You know, what's your name? And it has a conversation with you. And then through that conversation, it fills out all the forms and knows about all the openings and talks to you about them and, uh, and how you like them and whether um, you know, it's too much traffic and it thinks about uh, you know, reverse commutes in case uh, you have to drive uh, a little ways uh, for the job. And, um, and so it has a conversation with you in order to apply. And, um, and so it's being really successful in the marketplace for a high volume uh, businesses. That's interesting. So it sounds like that business and Algorithia, yep. uh, are they, but they're both SaaS businesses? Yeah, basically. So how focused are you on uh, a, a, a startup's ability to sort of, you know, make money? Um, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, it is important that startups make money. I think um, maybe that is one of the, the worries because um, you know, we're all technical founders in, in, the, uh, in the fund. And so some people thought, oh, you're going to fund research projects. I mean, um, there is amount of technical risk that we're willing to take that I think is quite high. But yet, at the same time, there has to be a path to making money, yeah. And you see so many um, startups. I just wondered if you could maybe talk for a, a bit about um, some of the more interesting trends you're seeing, as well, if you don't mind, about uh, things that you think startups should not be wasting their time doing. Um, okay. Um, so some interesting trends uh, that uh, I'm seeing are, you know, a move to 
you know, edge computing, where you can imagine for a lot of AI algorithms, um, let's say we wanted to learn something about this room by, uh, you know, the cameras coming up with a set of features. So I think uh, you could have all the video streamed to the cl cloud and then compute it in the cloud, the set of features, but uh, with edge computing, um, the features are really being computed kind of next to a camera or next to a sensor. And so that means that there's a lot less data that has to flow up to the cloud. And that means that you can even have like an on-prem practically laptop uh, being able to compute your model. So that's uh, two interesting trends that we see kind of work to get, working together. Okay. And, um, and then next, uh, that's really interesting technologically is uh, generative uh, learning. And that's where the machines generate uh, the data that's indistinguishable from uh, data that was collected or, or labeled by humans. And, and we were talking about this earlier, actually. Is this the musical? Yeah. Uh, so this is interesting. She was saying that there's a technology that sort of could replicate Chopin based on the, men, the many songs. And yeah. uh, that sounds great. You know, I don't know. Do we have time for audience questions? No, I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. Thank you, Anna. All right, <laughs> All right thank you.